Hello, it's Saturday, time for a chat. And still on the stout. Now, I've had a bit of a change with the stout because I've switched it from the hand pull just onto a keg tap. It's carved well enough now. Now, why have I done that? Um, I, I find there's a bit of a, a playoff between the keg and cask-ish, you know what I mean, with the keg done as like a cask. Um, and that trade-off is that the beer engine itself, um, inside it, holds about a third of a pint. And if I leave it overnight, it's all right during uh, a sesh, you know, you, you pour, you drink it, you come back, you get another one, etc. And there's no change in flavor. But if I leave it overnight or a couple of nights, then that first third I have to pour off because it, 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 it doesn't taste right. It is oxidized. It's, um, it, it almost tastes almost like a little sour. It, you'd know when you go to a pub and they pull the lines through properly and you get that first, it's just like, ooh, that's wrong. Um, it's, it's that kind of taste. So the, the trade-off is it's a really nice pint when you're having it, when it's a clean pint and it's really good. And I do like the hand pull, but I lose a third of a pint pretty much every day. And that's quite a trade-off. So I, I put, put it on there for a bit. Obviously, it sat at about 4 PSI anyway the whole time. So some of that is obviously going into the beer. So the beer's getting carbonated anyway, slowly. Not a lot, very little, because when I first put it on, it was it was almost like a flat Coca-Cola. Um, look at it, just a black liquid when I first switched it to keg. So it's not a lot, but it's a little bit. So I put it on there for a bit and then I switched it back on to, put it back onto keg. So that's that really for me. Um, I'll probably do that with most beers. I did that with the 80 shilling as well. I had that on the beer engine to start with. I had it for um, about a week and then I switched it over just because I, I don't like losing that much beer. You take the time and effort to make it, you know, kills me to pour it away. <laughs> As it is though, it's still a nice pint now. Um, it's going down well. I think we're about halfway through this cake to be honest. It's going down very well. Especially with the peanut butter pretzels. I'm talking about the peanut butter pretzels. My eldest came in here the other night when I was just uh, doing a few jobs in here and he spotted all my beer snacks. I'm just pointing them out there. So I have the peanut butter pretzels and the pork crunch, jalapeno, and I had some sort of peanuts. And he's like, what are they? Talking about the peanut butter pretzels. He'd never seen them before. Um, he'd never knew if he tried them. So now he's bought a tub. <laughs> I said, I, I, I wish I'd got shares in them. I wish I really do, I wish I'd got shares in them. Because the people are just buying, because they're quite very Moorish, very nice. Anyway, back to the beer. So I did the brew last, I think it was last Saturday. I think I talked about it on my last um, video last week. I brewed that morning and then I did the video in the afternoon. So um, it's been a week now. It's been dry hopped and is cold crashing. Excuse me, it's just cold crashing now. So that should be ready to cake tomorrow. Um, it's about 14 degrees. By tomorrow it'll be it'll be sat at two and it'll sit there till some mid afternoon. I'll probably get it uh, kegged, ready for uh, the next week, which is good because the as I said the stout's about halfway through now at least. Um, so nice to get another bit, and I've, I've been really looking forward to getting a, a, a pale ale kind of amber ale hoppy beer back on. Because as much as I like the 80 shilling and the stout and the hand pull, I do like a hot forward beer, I really do. And so I'm going to do, brew another one. And I'm going to do the same thing again, which was the vacant gesture, but with citrus oil. Hey, little citrus, but I won't be using citrus this time. Um, I might use mosaic and do it properly, do the full thing except I'm going to change the hopping uh, schedule this one I have as well um, the original recipe you dry hop twice 
with about, I think it's about 34, about 34, 37, I think it's about 37 grams of hops for each dry hop, so three days, five days dry hop. This time I'm going to do it all in one, this time I did it all in one go. I just dry hopped the whole lot at the end of, the, well, at the, I had a couple of points to go, it was at 1.011 or one two um, and I dry hopped it then it's got to get down now to sorry about that noise that is my heater it's getting cold now isn't it getting down to zero degrees the other day I got, got up to go to work a bit freezing um, where was I yeah so talking about the dry hop so I did I just did the whole 70 odd grams straight in I think it's 74 grams so yeah 37 grams split was the normal ratio. Um, I did the whole 74 grams when it got down to 1.0112. It's meant to get down to 1.008, which it normally does um, with USO5. So I let it get to there and I put the dry hop in, left it for about 12 hours, ramped it up to 22, because I, I ferment it, I tend to ferment at 20. That seems to be, that's my favourite temp these days for USO5, SO4 and generally the yeasts and things. Um, I, I'm quite happy with that temperature and the beers come out quite well at that temperature. Um, that's in my fermentation fridge. I mean the actual temperature of the beer it might be slightly different because that's just the probe onto the side of the bucket kind of held there with the sponge. Um, yeah, it still works fine for me at that temperature. Or what it says it is, is 20. And this next time, I'm looking at not even bothering with a dry hop. I'm going to put it all in the Whirlpool. I want to see the difference between the Whirlpool and the dry hop. And I know dry hopping um, helps in that it gives you the aroma. And aroma's so much of taste. <laughs> something like 70 percent is it i don't know so I, I think i've heard that banded about and i think i've used that myself as a, a ratio um of yeah so perhaps say i will we'll use that as a working figure so 70 percent of taste is aroma and i can understand then the dry hop helps with the taste and of course the aroma but i want to see what a difference it would make if i do it just straight straight in the whirlpool the dry you know the drop it to 80. I tend to go 75 personally but oh yeah, I'll drop it to 75, put the hops in and I, re I keep it recirculating constantly and with the pipe back in held there with my um, stirring spoon that I use in the brew. Um, it holds the pipe, it, it, just, it kind of whirlpool, it's not really a whirlpool but it's a recirculation, it just recirculates it round anyway um, which is what I want. I, I want to see if that does it. So I, I'm going to check every. So it's going to be a straight 100 grams bag of. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm tempted to do it with mosaic, but if I do it with citrus, it's more of an, uh, a test that I can then compare, can't I? Um, so I might, I might actually do it with the citra. Then I can compare and contrast the two beers, hopefully. If I haven't drunk the first one too quickly. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do next before I get on to doing a Nipah and then some big beer. Um, yeah, and then I've got spirits to do. I've still got the spirits to do. I haven't done them. Um, I was drinking the vodka the other day that I'd made with the dodgy oxidized wine. Um, still got that. It's got a. I mean, I've filtered it twice. I, I put it through the distillation twice, so it's double distilled. It's passed through carbon four times, and still. There's that hint of, oh, what can I, can I call it? It's, it's almost crits. Um, basements, that musty. There's a mustiness about it, which, which is oxidised wine, I suppose. Um, yeah, it takes a touch, but I was doing it in, uh, I'm not drinking straight vodka. I'm having, uh, been having the old um, uh, Bloody Marys, because uh, I love a Bloody Mary. Um, feel like I'm actually doing some good having some um, tomato juice, you know, <laughs> one of my five a day. So I'll 
maybe it doesn't count for anyway, for the vodka, but yeah, I was having Bloody Marys with it. And it was, couldn't taste it then, the Bloody Marys, or smell it. Um, but the vodka itself is a little faintness about it. I might distill it again and see what happens. Sorry, just looking at the bottle. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's pretty much that. The car, car's fixed now. Fucking hell, 500 quid that cost. Um, and that's just to get it back through the MOT. There's a st string of advisories still that I need to change all the tyres and um, shortly and get the um, discs, the discs pitted maybe. I have to get them sorted um, and some new pads on, I think, the rear. Um, and my indicator lights are slightly discoloured. I don't know what that's about, but yeah. So uh, that's going to be about another 300 quid, so it's going to be uh, fucking cars. If it wasn't for the fact that I have to drive to work 21 miles to get there and 21 miles back on a road across the moors, uh, there's no reliable bus service to do it. Um, yeah, I'd certainly get rid of it. I mean, I. 20 mile walks, yeah I was doing that but I'm not doing that to get to work and then walk it back the same day okay now, that would kill me, it really would especially if you saw the route uh, it's, a, it's across the moors it's big hills and banks and stuff and past the area of Dales, which is the only one in centre and stuff and yeah I couldn't be asked for that um, yeah the car's fixed um, I've just watched the football, the my new city game. De Gea, I, I, I'm surprised he didn't get man of the match to be honest, because he kept it to a less embarrassing level than it could have been. It could have easily been five, six in the first half, same as Liverpool were. Um, they were four, weren't they, in the first half? Could have easily have been that because they had so many chances. Did City, and they just. Yeah, hopefully I'll be able to stay there a bit longer because I'm enjoying this. <laughs> well, no, I shouldn't, but I am. Um, videos I haven't really watched anyone this week. Um, I'm meaning to watch Grimbarian's um, fancy dress beer review. Uh, the I think it's, I started, but I didn't have really time to watch sit and watch it. Um, I think he did the video, um, I'm sure it was um, a Marmite beer, I think it was, he's doing a beer review of, in, in full um, fancy dress. So I, I've got to watch that, because that looks fun. Um, I watched Big Banana earlier on, on a, reviewing one of Timmy's beers, and I went down a bit quick that. <laughs> Timmy's beers are dangerous, I know. I had it myself where you just, it's gone in seconds, and you're like, wow, that quite high percentage and I finished it whilst still doing the video and talking about it. More than that I've been really busy um, what with the car and things um, work and yeah back at work and stuff and generally day to day kids back at school so getting them to school and organising things and getting them back and I've been a bit busy. Oh, I've started to get back into the old Xbox again. Now the, now the nights are getting um, shorter. Well, the nights are getting longer. The day's getting shorter. You can't really go out and sit somewhere on an evening or uh, after work and such. Um, you don't really fancy going out places on a day when it's absolutely racking it down, do you? Um, and the rain. That's how I got back on the old Xbox. Um, I got the new Series X not long ago. And I did the um, Access All Areas, I think it's called. Um, that's where you buy the Xbox, but you don't. You pay for it in instalments over two years, 24 months. But you also get the, um, oh, excuse me, um, the, the Xbox Access, I um, can't remember what it's called. Um, game Pass, that's it. You get the Game Pass for two years as well. Um, and I've just been playing trying some of them games. Uh, I also got Civ 6 the other day. They, they had a sale on it. It was like £7 for Civilization 6 and I haven't played that for a while. 
I uh, got that. Oh, that's one of those games where you just... I started a game at 10 o'clock one morning and I was still on it at 8 o'clock that evening. Still the same game. And it was just like, oh yeah, just one more turn and I'll go do something. Yeah, just one more turn. And it is so addictive. So I'll have to stop that for a bit. Um, started playing Sniper, Sniper Elite 4 um, the other day. And I, I love the Sniper Elite games. I, I remember I had it on the PC, the original one. And I first played that as a multiplayer. And... Oh, incredible! Just crawling around the German build these old buildings in Germany and that, just trying to spot people to shoot them. And oh, that was brilliant. That was a great game. Um, so yeah, I've just got that. that that's on the uh, Xbox Access All Areas. And Conan, Conan Exiles. That's another one. Um, that's more of a just a single player, just almost like mining and building. It's a grafting thing to build up and build up and uh, uh, survival game it was addictive it's quite addictive because uh, it lets you you feel like you're accomplishing something early on not like DayZ where oh can hell you start DayZ with nothing and within 10 seconds someone's found you and killed you to steal your water bottle that's the only thing you've got is a water bottle I don't even think you have that do you anymore um, anyway yeah so that's what oh, another thing I've been doing well I maybe could be doing other things I suppose the old Xbox um, walking has has dropped off a bit although this week I did walk I think I did a, I think it was about a, just over five kilometer walk after I dropped the car off at the um, garage to get repairs on Tuesday uh, the garage is about five eight miles away so I Stop the car off, walk back, and the next day I had to walk there to pick it up again. And that's pretty much it. And th that's the walk's been. But I'm busy at work doing it. When I'm at work, I'm walking all over doing stuff. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I think uh, it's been a long one, hasn't it? Where are we on? 17 minutes? Ooh, not bad. Shorter than normal. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And I've just about finished that. I'm going to top this one up go back inside and maybe watch another football match or that's the miss I think the missus is watching something now so I might join her and we watch something like Shetland or something I've been watching that now I do like a bit of Shetland I've got the coat I just like to wind Laura by putting the coat on the stand there and doing the face that he does on Shetland it's just funny right so that's it we've got this far thanks for watching Beer's finished, still going well, still lovely. Um, if you haven't brewed it, try it, dry stout, the Bible. And hopefully next week I'll be with the uh, Hey Little Citra, the Citra version of Vicar Gesture. Cheers.